All right, we are moving right along in the integumentary system. Our next topic is hair and nails. And that's what this lesson is about. Hair and nails, crucial parts of the integumentary system. So let's get started. All right, we'll start with some fun facts. Some fun facts about hair. Hair is the second fastest growing tissue in your body. Bone marrow is the first. That's important, it's creating all your blood cells. You lose around 50 to 150 strands of hair a day. That's just naturally. Hair is elastic. It stretches about 30% when wet. We're gonna talk about that on the next slide. No hair grows on your palms, your soles, your lips, or in your mucous membranes. Other than that, you have hair. Most of it is just that fine hair. Hair samples can give clues about medicines, drug use, diet, alcohol, vitamins, and minerals. Your hair tell us, tells a story about you. Okay? And that's why some um, drug tests are not urine tests, but are actually hair samples. Uh, because they give information that is more long lasting. It can go back quite a while. So the wet stretch test for hair. So if you wanna see how healthy your hair is, simple test. So you can separate around 10 strands of hair. So that doesn't mean you need to count them. You're just gonna separate a small section of hair and you're gonna spray it well with water so that it's saturated. Then you're gonna hold the hair firmly between both hands and gently but firmly pull that hair away from your head. And then let it go. And you're gonna observe how the hair stretches and how it returns. So healthy hair should stretch around 30% of its length and then return kind of like an elastic band and show no signs of damage. So hair that does stretch and then returns is healthy. Hair that stretches but doesn't return to its previous length uh, is probably weak in protein. Hair that doesn't stretch is probably weak in moisture and hair that stretches but breaks is low in both protein and moisture. Okay, so a quick test to see uh, what kind of shape your hair is in. What are functions of hair? Well, it's protection. Your scalp, your nose, your ears, it provides us some protection. Facial expression, our eyebrows are huge indications on how we're feeling. It prevents heat loss on the scalp especially, okay? There are touch receptors in hair that can determine movement. And it's also used for visual identification and attraction. It's a big piece of that. So three main parts of hair. We have the hair shaft, that's above the skin. That's what you see. We have the hair follicle, and that surrounds the hair root. And then the hair root below the skin. Okay, so if we look at this diagram over here, all right, you can see that we have hair shaft above the skin, hair root below the skin, okay? And this right here, the follicle, okay? That's what surrounds the root, okay? So those are the three main parts of hair. Now, what about the parts of the hair shaft? Well, we have the medulla, the medulla M middle, medulla in the middle. It's the inner layer. And in light blonde hair and fine hair, this layer is probably absent. Then we have the cortex. And the cortex is arranged in bundles. And it's the middle layer, the biggest layer of your hair. And it's responsible for all the things pretty much that make up your hair, the color, the strength, the texture, the moisture, okay? And then we have the cuticle, and the cuticle is the outer layer, and it is arranged in overlapping cells, kind of think like shingles on a roof, and those overlapping cells are meant to protect the cortex underneath, those bundles, okay? So the parts of the hair shaft. Now, what about hair shape, okay? So the shape is determined, uh, the shape determines either you have straight hair or wavy hair or curly hair, okay? So straight hair has a follicle that is round, okay? So it is just um, a round follicle, straight hair, okay? If you look at wavy hair, wavy hair is not gonna be round, it's gonna be kind of oval in shape, 
flattened a little. It's going to produce some wavy hair. And then curly hair, not round, not oval, really much flatter. So a flatter hair follicle produces curly hair. So flat is curly, oval is wavy, and round is straight. So let's get into the hair follicle. The hair follicle, what surrounds the hair root, so it's called the root sheath, which makes sense. It wraps around the root. So the cells surround the hair root. The base of the follicle is called the bulb, and it kind of bulges out. So the bulb bulges out at the bottom. And in that bulb, the base, we have keratinocytes that are dividing in an area called the matrix. We have melanocytes producing pigment. Okay. And then we have at the very base, we have a hair papilla, which is a nerve ending, which senses the movement, and it also provides blood supply. The keratinocytes and the melanocytes can't divide and produce pigment if there's no blood supply. And then we have the hair follicle. Okay, the hair follicle, the matrix, is where we get those new hair cells produced. So remember the keratinocytes in the matrix are producing new hair. What happens is the cells in the root continue to push up, just like remember the oldest layer of our um, skin is at the top, the oldest part of your hair is at the very end of your hair, okay? As the hair cells um, grow and divide in the matrix, they push up cells. So the newest cells are below the surface of the skin and the oldest cells are gonna be at the end. But technically it's not cells, it's just keratin. Okay, so your hair is not living, hence it doesn't hurt when you get a haircut. Okay, but the oldest parts are going to be at the end, and the newest parts are deep underneath your skin. So the only reason it does hurt, like if your hair gets pulled for some reason, is because there is a nerve attached um, to each individual hair follicle. Okay, so... Looking at hair follicles again, we have um, this muscle, which we're going to talk about, the erector pili muscle. We have the hair shaft above the skin, the hair roots below the skin. We have the hair bulb, the matrix, which is the actively dividing cells at the bottom, the papilla, which is the nerve and blood vessel. So what is this erector pili muscle? This erector pili muscle is a small, smooth muscle, and it's attached to the hair follicle, to the hair root. And it will, when it contracts, it makes your hair stand up. So it gives you goosebumps. Now in animals, like for example, if our cat is trying to look intimidating, it's gonna poof up its fur. Same muscle, same concept. Now what are the phases of hair growth? So there are antigen, active growth. Anagen, active growth, AA. Catagen is re regression. The follicle is going to start shrinking. And then we have telogen, which is the resting phase. So it's going to have an anagen, active growth, catagen, regression. The follicle starts shrinking. Telogen is the resting phase. And then it's going to go back to anagen again. So the hair falls out as the new hair starts growing up in anagen. So our hair naturally goes through this cycle. How long? On your scalp, antigen lasts about two to six years. Catagen, only about two weeks. And then telogen, one to three months. So each hair follicle is not growing constantly. So what are some problems you could have with hair? Well, you could have split ends. What happens? The cuticle, that outer coating, flakes off, and then the cortex, those bundles, frays out. You could have an ingrown hair. A shaved or tweezed hair grows back into the skin and it causes inflammation and pain. It's more common in black men who shave their facial hair because that hair is curly and so it's more likely to curl back under the skin. So curly hair makes it more likely anyway. And if you're shaving your face, it's, often, it's more often and those hairs are just more likely. Now, nails. Start with some fun facts again. Fingernails grow faster than toenails. 
tapping your fingers, tapping your nails will stimulate some nail growth. It's made of keratin, just like hair. The nail on your middle finger grows the fastest. So functions. The nail reinforces and protects the ends of your digits. It's used for scraping and manipulating small objects. Our nails can actually be tools. And what are the parts of nail? So three main parts, the nail root, surprise, surprise, under the skin, the nail body, that's the part you see and take care of typically. And then the nail free edge is the part of the nail that grows beyond the edge of the digit. So if your nails are even slightly long, you will have a free edge. So the nail root, let's look there first. It's under the skin, so you're not really seeing it. The edge of it, you can see. It's that little white crescent shaped, and it's called the lunula, that white crescent shape at the base of your nail. And again, we have an area called the matrix, and the matrix has cells that divide to produce a new nail. So what about the nail body and the free edge? Again, the nail body is the visible part of the nail we take care of. The nail bed is underneath the nail body. And the nail bed has the blood vessels, the nerves, and the melanocytes. So that's why if you were pulling on your nail um, or you got your nail yanked off, that happened to me once, not pleasant, um, it is going to bleed and hurt, okay? Because the nail bed has plenty of blood supply, nerve supply, and it also produces the pigment, which is why it might, the nail might appear a different color um, on a different person. And the free edge, the part of the nail that may extend past the end of the digit, that's the part of the nail that you're going to actually trim or cut. And then the cuticle is that narrow band of epidermis at the base of the nail underneath the lunula, and it provides a waterproof barrier. So what are some problems with our nails? Well, we could have an ingrown nail just like an ingrown hair. Typically, it's because the side of a toenail grows into the skin. It causes pain, redness, swelling. It's possibly an infection. It's usually the helix, big toe. What are some causes? Wearing tight shoes and cutting toenails too short or not straight across. So kind of trying to angle the cut of your toenail and uh, the edges then can grow actually into the side of the skin. And also if you injure your toenail. White nails. So if your nails have this very white appearance, it can indicate liver problems like hepatitis. If you have yellow nails, it often indicates a fungal infection. In rare cases, yellow nails can indicate something more serious like lung disease or thyroid disease. Now remember, if you were like eating Cheetos or something and you have some yellow on your nails, it's probably the Cheetos. Bluish nails, lack of proper blood flow and oxygen. It can indicate a lung issue, okay? So not a good thing. And if you see these rippled nails, so the nails are very pitted and not smooth in texture, it can be a warning sign of inflammatory arthritis or psoriasis. So now remember, those are just suggestions. If you think you have a problem with your nails, I would seek medical advice. But there you have it. Lots of information about hair and nails. Hopefully, you're just a little bit smarter.